Hi, I'm Aminata Kamara. I'm the TCDI West Africa Coordinator. And today we are with Tosin. Tosin, is it not Hi, I'm Tosin Akuriola Jai. I also be a Victoria. Um, I'm the Executive Director of Women Environment and Youth Development Initiative, a grassroots women-led youth-focused organization working in North Central Nigeria. What is your background in the tobacco control sector and what do you do this work? Well, um, my background came about from my experience and I've been in this work for like um, 15 years now, working at grassroots in Nigeria, um, engaging mainly adolescents, young people and women. So I came into tobacco work uh, based on uh, the rate of drug abuse among young people and women and even adolescents uh, across communities uh, at the North Central Nigeria. And um, this came from a patient or it's just like um, you decided to work on this sector because you have seen a lot of young people um, having like bad consequences of tobacco, tobacco use or? Yeah, it came from, um, let me say, childhood experience um, driven by passion. You know, so uh, growing up was quite tough, and um, mm -hmm. um, I grew up in the suburbs of Lagos, where you see young people uh, involving in various uh, vices, including mm -hmm. drug abuse, tobacco use, mm -hmm. in different forms, uh, both in in school and out of school use, making use of drugs indiscriminately. Um, upon graduation from an institution. I decided to go full time into the, we call it the third sector. You know, we have the government, the private, and the civil society. Mm -hmm. So, with the aim to advocate, you know, it's not um, about penalizing alone. What can we do to help the young people or the vulnerable group to live a better life? Yeah. How did you get involved in the Tobacco Control Data Initiative? Yeah. Um, immediately, I started. Uh, as the founder of Women Environment and Youth Development Initiative, maybe I started in 2008. The focus was on adolescents, youth, and women. We we realized uh, a lot of them out of depression mm -hmm. or out of being vulnerable or even peer pressure going to drug abuse, mm -hmm. involving themselves in various vices. So I joined. Uh, a civil society group called Civil Society Initiative Against Illicit, um, Illicit and Addictive Drug Abuse. Back then, about 13 years ago, we went around schools in the Northern Para States, mm -hmm. enlightening them about um, the program was called um, Reach the Youth Before Drug Do. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we went around schools. And a lot of testimony came out from these young people, the, the secondary school students, that uh, uh, maybe my friend gave it, gave it to me, you know, I had to make use of this. Some even said by virtue of their parents sending them on errand to buy cigarettes, that's how they, they got to get a puff of their own. Mm -hmm. So it's something I've been doing for over 10 years now, like I said, I started the civil society, working in the civil society actively about 15 years ago. Then between 10 to 15 years ago, I started working on tobacco uh, drugs. And at the grassroots where I'm from in Nigeria, we partnered the NDLEA, that's the National Drug uh, Enforcement uh, Law Agency mm -hmm. at the grassroots. And sometimes um, what we do is uh, we don't we say rather than penalize, let's get into the minds of these young people. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we can move them away from drug abuse, with tobacco use. Yeah. Alcohol. Has your work been um, easy to do? I mean, you are doing advocacy and awareness raising. Um, was it like easy for you to um, talk to people and um, try to change their um, behavior? Mm -hmm. No. It's not been easy because um, we don't have a lot of information. Mm -hmm. for civil society actors on tobacco control or either I can say we have some partners working around drug abuse generally but zeroing in on tobacco control you know tobacco control you talk about cigarettes you talk yeah. about shisha you talk about uh, some other smoking and puffing stuff mm, it's not been easy because all the funds 
or all the support are going to HIV. Yeah. They are going into other areas, but specifically, we, we one can get HIV by abusing drugs, you know, by by taking um, tobacco indiscriminately. You can you can be, you can make yourself vulnerable to social vices that you are not supposed to go into. Mm-hmm. So it's not been easy because we are not having the support, but we are not relaxing. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. But, and, and again, reaching um, people one on one. People are always willing to listen, but you need to be, bring them, you need to not just talk to them, you need to offer the solution also. So you can only offer a solution when you have, um, will I say data? Yeah, I think I can say data because if you can pack your, your intervention with uh, data that uh, you see this is happening here, what can we do? And uh, if we have like institutions supporting uh, those that I know in the developed nations like the US, they have what they call maybe sober group or something. If they want to, if they don't want to abuse drugs anymore, mm-hmm. they can come around. We don't have such here. Yeah. So it's either you are up there or you are down there. Mm-hmm. If you are abusing drugs or tobacco, you are just abusing it. So talking about solutions. So now that you have seen the Tidia Nigeria dashboard, how um, are you planning to use it in your work? Yeah, you know, seeing the dashboard, you know, came at, let me say, a relief to some extent Mm -hmm. because on the dashboard you have information about um, locations, you have information about spread. You know, coming from the North Central, using the dashboard, I realized North Central Mm -hmm. has a prevalence of 3 to 4.99 within the North, where I stay. So this is high. The dashboard can provide for my organization and other civil society actors on tobacco control in Nigeria information on how to, you know, generate data mm-hmm. or convince, let me say, partners to actually come and work with you. Yeah. It's also useful in terms of policy advocacy because um, working at the grassroots, we can approach. Uh, policy makers that there should be a regulation around this area. We know something is being done at the national. And apart from the fact that um, efforts at the national, it's uh, not even yielding the optimal, uh, optimal results we are expecting. Sometimes these efforts do not get to the grassroots. Mm-hmm. But we also have policy makers at the House of Assemblies at the sub national. We can approach them yeah. for policy implementation in this area. So, and, and apart from that, we can also use it for, apart from using it for policy advocacy, trying to use it to woo partners to actually invest or um, support in this area so that we don't lose our young people to, to vulnerability around tobacco abuse or uh, tobacco abuse. You know? mm-hmm. So we can also use it to create awareness, sensitization, and I'm, personally, I'm looking forward into mm-hmm. this area specifically. Mm-hmm. You need to create mm-hmm. awareness that this thing is prevalent in so 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 area in the country. Mm-hmm. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, indeed. I don't so, know if can add. I've also yeah, seen the please. gender aspects of, exactly. the, yeah. um, of the dashboard and I know it's a good one. Though we we don't have much women um, abusing tobacco in Nigeria, but the reality is there's what we call um, passive smokers. Mm-hmm. We are not the one smoking directly, but uh, mere being in, in the vicinity of someone mm-hmm. abusing tobacco, you can you can have health challenges. Sure. So our women are exposed. So it's, it's also a gender issue. Sure. So it's something that I look into working with the women-led organizations to work with them. Fine, all women may not be abusing tobacco directly, but they are also affected. Because a man that abused drug comes home, and uh, it's not stable, can you know, do anything to expose the woman. If you um, have to pick one team or one type of visual or data in this dashboard, what will be this um, information? It's like, I want to use this information for this specific um, advocacy work. You gave some examples, mm-hmm. but you may have like a number one priority currently. What is your top priority? and how this dashboard can help you. Yeah, I would have loved to be able to pick more than one, but uh, the one yeah. I, would, I would pick 
number one is the prevalent aspect because we are living in denial. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of parents send their words to schools and you know, they don't know what they are doing because um, most of these things start from peer pressure. I'm sorry, I'm speaking more of young people, women, because that's my constituency. It's important. You know, so um, I will pick the prevalence aspect of it and I will work vigorously with it. Mm -hmm. um, let the, the, the populace realize the fact that this thing is prevalent. By the time, I don't know the, the level of the data, but uh, the reality is by the time you interview 10 to 15 young people, mm -hmm. at least a few of them have you know, abused tobacco one, one, uh, one time or the other. Yeah, you know? yeah, true. Sure. So I don't know, I can even say I'm also a victim. Mm -hmm. I remember them in my room when I was in, uh, in the institution, a, a friend of ours brought it in our you know? yeah. so it's an issue true, yeah. that's true so I'll pick the privilege aspect I'm also in love with the gender aspect of mm -hmm. it because mm -hmm. as emphasized earlier um, women are affected mm -hmm. girls are affected mm -hmm. and no one say gender now it's not only about women and girls but you know, we need to speak for the gender aspect mm -hmm. of tobacco Control. Yeah. So you mentioned that um, you had access to few data, or there is no data in this space. So how were you working before um, having now this dashboard? Were you using um, information here and there, or how were you accessing data before? Exactly. We were using information here and there, and out of out of just what we call crude passion. It's not, um, most of our interventions, we are not um, data, data backed. They mm -hmm. just things that we are doing, and, oh, I feel this is happening. We just do it. So we did not have the uh, data back then. Mm -hmm. Not only as a uh, civil society actors, but generally in Nigeria, even the policy implementers, mm -hmm. those in government do not have data. So it's an issue. Mm -hmm. So. In the past, it's been difficult working with data. Mm -hmm. We don't even have access to data. No, no one was doing something around yeah. data when it comes to tobacco control. Mm -hmm. Even those are putting on, let me say, um, this, uh, let, let me call it regulation. You know, when you pick up uh, tobacco or cigarettes, you see the this, uh, smokers are able to die. You know, mm -hmm. You don't even have data to back some of the regulations they are doing. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. with, uh, working in time pass has not been easy mm -hmm. because we have no data. Mm 